So what I will be sharing with the room today is I'll be looking at women refugee entrepreneurs who've been striving for self-reliance. Um, and in their case, I'll give you a little bit of context about the um, refugees in Kenya, um, where we have the case that we have a little bit over half a million refugees and asylum seekers currently in the country. Um, they come from various um, ethnic backgrounds. So we have majority of the refugees in Kenya are of Somali background. Um, and there's a little bit of overlap because we have the Kushitic or Kushite um, ethnic minority um, present within the country as well. So there's a lot of um, factors that come into play when it comes to the different refugees and how they found themselves within um, the confines of the borders of Kenya. Um, of these refugee population, Unfortunately, most of them are designated into refugee camps with very few residing in urban centers. Now, these refugee camps, there's two major ones where we have 44% residing in the Northeast. So this is um, Dadaab as labeled on the Kenyan map um, and 40% of them residing in the second camp, which is Kakuma, um, Kakuma camp, which is in the Northwestern um, region of Kenya. Um, and then the remaining 16% are in urban areas, some are located in Nairobi, uh, which is the capital city, and some are in smaller cities or smaller towns um, with varying numbers, but majority of the urban refugees mainly being in Nairobi. Um, so looking at figures at a glance um, in relation or pertaining to women, um, these are some of the figures that I've drawn up from um, literature as well as from my study in itself. So my largest study focuses on refugees as a whole. Um, of the refugee population and asylum seeker population in Kenya, 48%, a little bit over 48% of them um, are women. Now, from a study that was done in Kakuma camp, 31% of the business owners, where there's 2,000 businesses existing within the camp, have been found to be women business owners as well. Now, from my study in itself, where I conducted a qualitative approach, so in-depth interviews, as well as um, a qualitative, quantitative approach, um, collecting questionnaires, my study represented 41% of women who were running their own businesses. Now, this is an important factor, or I deem it to be important as I was having a glance over my data, where I also found that 69% of the 41% of women respondents also had children. So that is a very important factor to kind of understand, you know, the motivations behind these women. Why, why are they doing business? You know, um, and in Kenya's context, there's a lot of restrictions that already exist whilst living in these camps. And um, another starting figure that I thought was also important to try and mention today is that only 16% um, of the women that partook in my study had post-secondary and undergraduate qualifications, so higher, educa higher education qualifications, because that's quite significant. We've known, we know the significance of educating women, um, you know, educate a woman, you've educated the entire village. So that kind of ripple effect, that, that um, constant. Now, to give you a full understanding of the context, why these refugees exist in these camps, it is as a result of a Refugees Act. So refugees are often forced to go into these camps where they have very little mobility um, and they're designated between Kakuma and Dadaab. Now here they have limited movement, in fact, no movement. You cannot leave the camp unless it is for medical reasons or perhaps you've been repatriated back to your country or to another third country. Um, and in, so, in some cases, accessing humanitarian assistance also has this impact. If you are um, UNHCR and all these NGOs have uh, re relegate the responsibilities. If you decide to become an urban refugee, you cannot seek humanitarian assistance if you live in the capital cities. So that also has a ripple effect on how progressive you can become when it comes to self-reliance. Um, but most recently in Kakuma camp, now that one is the one which is in the Northwestern part of Kenya, there was a comprehensive refugee response framework known as the CCRS. Now this is an initiative that was done by both the government and UNHCR in order to try and improve self-reliance amongst refugees. Now in this new settlement known as Kalabaye, Refugees are able to actually get more opportunities in starting up their business. And some of these women that partook in my study reside in this Kaleboye camp. So I took data from both people in both Kaleboye and Kakuma camp. Now the challenges I identified um, from the data that I have is that for women, um, certain challenges um, resulted in them not being fully immersed in 
focusing on the success of their business. So they have skills. Some of them have the educational qualifications. Some of them have skills that they have um, come with to Kenya from their irrespective um, home countries. Um, but you do find that they lack opportunities for skills development. So perhaps if you are a nurse, there's no longer that opportunity to practice um, those capabilities or your knowledge and the skill sets that you possess in your home country. Language, of course, is an issue as well. I'm sure um, if you were in the room earlier when Clara was talking about her being in Germany and that being a hindrance, you can see how in that case, and she has freedom of mobility, how that can impact someone who's confined within a camp, a refugee camp. Um, Childcare is also an issue. Um, if you reflect on the fact that you have 69% of the women who are part of my study having um, children, of course, it kind of limits or it, it has an impact on how well they run their businesses. So factors such as having to close your business early to take care of your kids after school or having to um, ensure sometimes even giving up on your business because you have to stay home now and take care of your children. These are all factors that have impacted them. Camp security is also a very significant aspect of the challenges. So there's a lot of gender-based violence that takes place um, within these refugee camps. You find that often it can either be um, rape or in sometimes security, their own security is, um, is quite an important factor. Hence, for some of them, they end up closing their businesses earlier in comparison to men in order to avoid um, finding themselves in compromising situations. And of course, labor market participation. Being in a refugee camp, you have limits to the things that you can access. Now, these refugee camps are located in the most arid of locations in Kenya. So they are already incapacitated in terms of the access to resources that they have whilst they're in this refugee camp. Now, despite these challenges, sorry, let me just highlight that for you. Despite some of these challenges they face, these women have overcome um, the challenges um, that they are thrown at them in order to find ways in which they can navigate and become more successful at their businesses. So when it comes to the lack of freedom of movement, they network, they use social capital, they tap into NGOs, governments, in fact, groups that they exist in, their ethnic um, or heterogeneous and um, homogeneous groups in order to be able to find opportunities. When it comes to gender roles and missing childcare facilities, there's organizations that have stepped up that provide these opportunities for these women. You also find that these women also come together and set up ways in which they can provide their own childcare um, or work together in order to provide childcare and run these businesses. When it comes to language as well, so some of them, these refugees have existed in these camps for years. Some of them have been there since 1992, since these refugee camps were opened. So some of them have fully immersed and know Swahili and English. So it's become easier for them to exist within the Kenyan um, context. For some who are now, um, who have been born and raised in the camps, you're already used to the Kenyan curriculum or the local curriculum. So of course, language now does not become a factor. Um, education opportunities as well. So you have international universities as well as local Kenyan universities that have taken institutions there and people are able to access um, educational qualifications as well as skill sets. When it comes to their lack of rec recognition for qualifications, um, the unclear bureaucratic processes are somewhat being cut down because now these local institutions are also starting to acknowledge that these people are skilled in the professions that they either did prior to coming to the camp or even utilizing the ones that they've acquired whilst in the camp. And of course, lastly, you have the refugee-led um, labor market integration. So they support each other in order to be able to become successful within these refugee camps. To conclude, what this, what this study, and though it is not even fully a part of what I'm, I'm researching on when it comes to understanding refugee entrepreneurs in Kenya, looking at how the women, the refugee women operate, there's a lot of engagement in labor market that's influenced to, by accessing social capital. So not only do they work with the people in the camps, but they also work with people outside of the camps. Refugee networks, of course, extend to urban locations. So you'll find that some refugees perhaps leave the camps in order to search for better opportunities in um, urban setting. So they re tap into that. Sometimes you also find that the restrict the lack of freedom and the right, right to work has resulted in a lot of innovation. So creativity and like people starting up businesses that uplift and help other people within this entire context has taken a toll. Um, anticipated varied outcomes is also um, something else that is an important factor that is, st is um, standing out while looking at, the, at what my study suggests. So accessing these support structures, 
um, they're easier to access when you're in the camp settings, because if you live in Nairobi, you're not able to, to ask you an HCR for help. So, but being in a camp setting, you can tap into that and that can lead to, a, to your business or your venture success. Now, one of the most stunning, outstanding threats currently is the fact that the camps have been ordered for closure by the Kenyan government. Now that uncertainty, of course, leaves everything up in the air. There's the deadline for June, 2022, but not, not much has been said of whether or not these camps are gonna close. So there's that uncertainty as well. But looking at the resilience that these women have possessed, in fact, all refugees have possessed, they still keep on working and, and striving to, uh, towards self-reliance in order to become um, self-sustaining. Self and it's something that um, when you tap into the two, the SDGs, um, for me, I had to highlight all of them because looking at, at each and every single one of them, I realized that, you know, ensuring that the refugees have um, are self-reliant and that they have access to human rights will ensure that they're able, we're able to meet all these SDG goals. That is my presentation for today. Um, thank you so much. If you have any questions, um, please do um, ask away. Thank you.